you guys, Willie here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're gonna be reviewing the all new 2023 Kia Stinger GT2. And a big thanks to David at Century Kia in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for David. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Stinger has been Kia's mid-size liftback since 2018. Outside of a 2022 facelift, the Stinger has been basically unchanged, which isn't necessarily a bad thing considering this vehicle single-handedly is responsible for the improvement of Kia's reputation. Unfortunately, this 2023 Stinger will be discontinued after this model year for 2023, so if you're looking for a premium performance bargain, go snag one of these up while you can. The 2023 Stinger you see here is a top trim GT2 with a base price of $51,790. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your flickering LED daytime running light, LED projector headlights right up top, functional airflow in both corners, panel housing your advanced safety features, front facing camera, full front parking sensing, and functional heat extractors right up top. Very bold front end styling with this green metallic paint color. It is really beautiful in this Florida sun. The wheel and tire setup, also impressive for this GT2. We get these multi-spoke black and silver contrasted 19-inch rims wrapped in super sticky Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. Dimensions being 225-45 R19 up front or 40 R19 up front. They're an offset setup. They're 255s out rear. We'll check those out in one second. We have some smoke chrome right outside this door trim with functional heat extraction. Same smoke chrome trim for the mirrors. Camera on the mirror, which functions both for the 360 and blind spot cameras that we get on the gauge display. I'll show you guys that once we take this car out for a drive. We have blind spot monitoring on the glass, smart access for the driver and a front passenger, black trim for the bottom part of the window trim, some smoked chrome right up top. Hopefully you can pick up this panoramic moonroof. I wish they continued the black trim all throughout this roof, but still nice to get the panoramic roof. Blacked out B-pillar. We get an offset rear wheel and tire setup, as you mentioned. Dimensions back here are 255-35 ZR19s. We still get the Brembo brake caliper out rear. Hopefully picked up the four piston Brembo up front, but we still get the Brembo in the back. Other than that though, very impressive. The 255 wide tires should be enough to put this power to the ground. We'll check that out during the test drive. The gas cap, I don't believe is pushed open. It is not. I'll show you the latch is inside. Out rear, faux heat extractor, quad exhaust tips, LED taillights, turn signals, and the reverse lights. Stinger badge right in the middle. GT on the right side, third brake light right above the rear windshield, the shark fin style antenna. Very aggressive diffuser with these quad exhaust tips. And speaking of the quad exhaust tips, let's fire up this 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 and hear how she sounds. Alright guys, that was the sound of the 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 sold by Kia for the 2023 Stinger GT. And it sounds okay, the induction note's a lot more aggressive than the actual exhaust note, but it makes a ton of power at 365 horsepower, 376 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this Stinger GT to 60 in the mid to high four second range. So no, it's not as quick as like a BMW M340i, but you're saving up to 10,000 bucks at the base price compared to it. Compared to like a CTS-V from Cadillac, this thing will blow the doors off the CTS-V right around the same price point. But what you see is basically what we get. We get strut tower braces connected from the strut towers all the way to the chassis. In front of the grill, we don't have any additional, or behind the grill, we don't have any additional supports, but those two in the engine bay should be plenty. We can shut this hood right up. The hydraulic struts are appreciated. Very hot hood too, so glad that there's hydraulic struts. Anyway though, we haven't checked out the window sticker yet on this 2023 Stinger GT2 rear wheel drive. We got the Ascot green exterior, beige interior. Mechanically, you can pause, take a look at all the standard features. We get a limited slip, Brembo brakes, drive mode selector, eight speed automatic transmission. Loaded with advanced safety features, the interior you can pause, exterior you can pause, and additional equipment, 155 for the carpeted floor mats, 115 for the mug guards. So total price, 52 after an $1,145 destination charge, we're sitting right at 53,205 bucks. Fuel economy right at 20 combined MPGs, 18 in the city, 25 on the highway. Taking a step inside, we can really see what we got going on. This 2023 Stinger GT, up top soft touch, the middle portions all leather stitch trim, gushy soft armrest, storage, auto one touch up front, 
power folding mirrors, four-way adjustable. Down below, we have some more storage. You're probably not gonna fit a foot long width-wise, but if you squeeze it in there, it'll fit, and you'll fit a 24-ounce water bottle to wash it down. Aluminum step-in plate as we step inside, perforated and quilted leather seats. They're heated and ventilated, fully adjustable. We have lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats, and adjustable thigh support. Taking a step inside, we can really see what we got going on. This 2023 Stinger GT. Foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. Uh, first thing we notice is the steering wheel. It's not quite as thick as a BMW M wheel, but it's a very premium feel, solid 10 and two bolstering. We have perforated leather for the nine and three area. Nine and three feels great in your hand too. Flat bottom GT right below. The Kia horn area is hard plastic, well grained though. The horn itself, loud and aggressive. We'll do a window check, see if we get dual panes. I believe we do. Yes, we do on the Stinger GT2. I believe all Stingers actually get dual pane windows. Steering wheel controls, we have voice commands, AM, FM, Sirius. We have the volume and skip controls. You can hang up and answer your phone calls and favorites. On the right side, infotainment adjustments, cruise control, radar cruise control, and active lane keeping assist. Paddle shifters, which are aluminum, controlling your eight speed automatic transmission, auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our interior brightness, lane keep assist, gas cap release, and trunk release. We have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, aluminum pedals, hopefully you can pick them up on camera. Stitched dashboard, it's not true leather, but it's a leather red trim, looks extremely premium. Camaro style air vents with these little adjustments, pretty cool design. 10.25 inch touchscreen, it's not the updated 12, 0.3 inch screen that you see throughout all Kia's new vehicles. And I guess we're not gonna get that screen here considering this car is gonna be discontinued after this year. If we didn't mention, we get the Harman Kardon sound system too, and it sounds incredible. Each door panel has three speakers on it. But speaking of the touchscreen, we can take a quick look at the map once it loads right up. Pretty good resolution. The response is okay for the zoom, but the sliding back and forth, it responds basically just like an iPhone. We can return home, see everything else we get available in this touchscreen. Hopefully you can pause, take a look at all of that and right back to the home screen. Anyway though, my personal favorite to look at at all times would be the map, so we'll leave it there. Shortcuts if you don't want to go through the touchscreen, volume and tune dials. Beneath that dual zone automatic climate control, USB A port and a 12 volt with a wireless charger right next to it. The gear selector controls the eight speed automatic transmission. We can take a quick look at the backup camera. Really high resolution guidance lines and trajectory and we get a three 60. We can check out the different views over the top trailer hitch view, blind spot view so you don't have to worry about scuffing up your wheels and tires. Again, 360, really high resolution. Put it right back in the park and it returns us to the home screen. And one thing I just noticed, check out the mirrors. You put it into reverse, the mirrors automatically drop down so you can see exactly where your wheels are, also helping you out to not scuff up your really nice 19 inch rims that we have here. Behind that, electronic parking brake with brake hold, drive mode selector. The drive modes include sport, custom, comfort, eco, and smart. And we have adjustable bolsters too. So when you're in sport mode, the bolsters automatically get a little bit tighter. We didn't mention the gauges. We go to about 6,500 RPM for the tack with the coolant temperature beneath, fuel level on the right side with a 180 mile an hour speedometer. If you take a quick look at the different infotainment modes, speedometer, tire pressure, you have to be driving to see, performance gauges, accumulated info, sensory fueling, drive info, and auto stop. Compass, advanced safety features, and the attention level and the overall settings all right over here. My personal favorite to look at at all times would be the performance gauges, so we'll leave it right over there. Behind this drive mode selector, we have our heated and ventilated seats, parking sensors you can disable, and you can check out your camera at all time. Press one more time, it returns us to the home screen. Auto start, stop, you can disable. For the purpose of this review, we will. The armrest is not the softest, but it's definitely softer than my Camaro. Contrast stitched. The space for the console is decent. You can lay down probably six 12 ounce bottles in there with no problem. You can put this little cubby right back where you can fit an iPhone, shut everything right back up, and a little bit of additional storage in front of it. The glove box, we can pull this latch. It is damped and lined with felt, pretty large. You're fitting 20, maybe 25 license plates. Two pairs of shoes if you're under a size 10. Aluminum trim running all throughout the top of the glove box. Frameless auto dimming rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it. The interior lights are LED. We can take a quick look at this moonroof. I'm not, I'm not sure if I would call it a panoramic, but it's definitely a moonroof. Very large panel of glass. We can open up the glass. It goes on top of the roof, so it sticks out like a sore thumb a little bit. We'll see how far it opens up. Pretty far, see if it goes any further. It does not, but all the way out to the end of the front row, we could poke our way out of here. Beautiful day today in Tampa, Florida. Sunny and 89 degrees according to this Stinger 
GT. We'll leave this shade open so when we hop out back, you can see how much light is brought into the cabin. Oh, I said we'll leave the shade open. Okay, that's about it though for the front seat. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. So up top, out back, we have soft touch material still, gushy soft leather trim for the center, gushy soft armrest, power window, heated rear seats. Three speakers, Harman Kardon speakers, even on the rear door panel, guys, this system bumps. We have pretty solid storage beneath too. You'll fit a 24 ounce bottle, maybe a six inch sub right next to it. Additional aluminum step in plate. The rear seats are very well bolstered. The padding goes out all the way out to the door frame. Quilted and perforated rear seats. The legroom looks decent. I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings. And I still have at least three, maybe four inches of overall knee room. Headroom, I have at least an inch, maybe two. So if you're under six foot four, six foot five, you should be able to sit behind your own seat settings back here with no problem. We get cargo nets behind both of the front seats. Technically a third zone climate control too, because you can adjust the temperature with this dial and adjust the fan speed with these dials. So I'll call it a third zone climate, 12 volt and additional USB A port, nice. The light brought into the cabin thanks to the sunroof or moonroof is impressive. It's basically the same size as the front windshield. Very large panel of glass. We get a string here for the center cubby. Syntax, pretty well padded. You can fit two 20 ounce bottles or cans in there with no problem. The rear seats back here are comfortable for a back seat. The bolstering is decent. The padding for the bottom portion is good. And the thigh support is accommodating for somebody of my size. Anyway, that's about it for the back seat. Let's check out the trunk or hatch, whatever you like to call it and then take this 2023 Stinger GT2 out for a drive. So underneath the G is a button, the auto opening lift gate, but as you see, pretty solid size floor. If you fold the rear seats down 60, 40, I'd expect you to fit a 60 inch TV back here. And for a sedan type vehicle, that's very impressive. That's why you go with the lift back over a conventional sedan is for the cargo space. Secret storage underneath these floor mats, we have a little bit of secret storage outside of your fix a flat kit spare tire maybe underneath here yep we get the donut and the fix flat kit beneath that as well tie downs no subwoofer back here but i'm sure there is one somewhere in this vehicle for this booming Harman Kardon sound system but what you see is basically what we get we can shut this lift back right up with a click of a button and it shuts up pretty quickly we can walk around this 2023 stinger gt2 one more time it is a beautiful vehicle truly one of the best performance bargains on the road today front and rear brembo brakes panoramic moonroof 365 horsepower zero to 60 in the mid to high four second range and speaking of the zero to 60 let's take this 2023 stinger gt2 out for a drive and see what it's got all right guys now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2023 Kia Stinger GT2. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, the driving position is nice and low, very sporty. The steering feels good. We're currently in sport mode. We'll start it off in comfort transition into sport and just see what the differences are. So in comfort, the steering is lighter, much lighter. The ride quality is pretty good over the bump. Yeah, very quiet in here too. One thing I didn't mention during the review, um, we have a heads up display here too for the GT2 and it's a pretty large display It shows you traffic sign recognition where you are in your lane and of course the speed that you're currently going We'll try an acceleration out off the line in comfort mode come to a complete stop. No brake torque just on the gas Okay Ooh. Traction control Ooh. Yeah, this thing can move but yeah the traction control kicks in because we're on some concrete pavement not the best when it comes to grip but we'll step out onto some darker asphalt and hopefully it'll change things up another thing i'm noticing unlike the sportage hybrid that we just reviewed in this channel definitely more road noise the sportage hybrid was essentially silent on this road whereas this car you can clearly hear the road noise it's not bad it's not like an obnoxious amount of road noise but it is there we can try out a turning radius and body roll test throwing it in a lot quicker than we should. I think there's a police officer there with a bomb sniffing dog. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about that though. But turning radius here, pretty good. And we're not gonna floor it in front of the cop, but about third throttle, good torque. Go, wow, and it just continues to build too. Really impressive performance, guys. We can throw it into sport mode. That's what you buy the Stinger GT4. So sport mode. We'll try to find some smooth pavement and try to get an acceleration off the line. And again, the bolsters get tighter as soon as you put it into sport. No brake torque, just 
off the line on the gas. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, the trash control. Wow. Good lord, you look down, you're going fast. But with the trash control kicking in, it limits the power like it's supposed to. But again, that's because of the pavement, not so much because of the car. And in sport, the steering is tighter. Everything just feels so much more responsive. We'll do a turning radius, body roll test in sport, see if the suspension actually gets a little bit stiffer. But right here, throwing it in way quicker than we should. Ooh, a little bit of body roll, but it's so limited, no understeer. And coming back out, ooh, ooh, <laughs> this thing is a beast. We try out these manual shift modes, fourth gear, third gear, and the downshifts are quick. Second gear with a nice rev match pull. Ooh, throwing it in way quicker than we should. Oh, sharp handling, guys. Wow, it's a car there, so you can't push it too hard, but hopefully you can pick up just how sharp this thing feels with these Michelin Pilot Sport 4 Summer Performance tires. And hopefully you can see that blind spot camera working. Second gear on the gas. Oh. Ooh, this thing is quick, really quick. And through the turn, the body roll stays limited. Steering feels good and coming out. Oh, wow, guys, this is such a good performer. We try out a real world turning radius and do an acceleration starting off in first gear. Turning radius is sharp, first gear on the gas. Woo. Oh, guys, this thing is a beast. I hope you can pick up just the level of this performance on camera. We can try out this lane keep assist. Kia's lane keep assist has usually been one of the best that I've reviewed in this channel. I don't even have to touch the steering wheel. We had this turn, so I'm going to put my hands here, but look, it guides us completely through the turn. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I wouldn't rely on it, but it definitely does the job to a degree. If you're looking for a luxury performance sedan, lift back, whatever you like to call it, this thing is awesome. Good torque, rev match downshifts, throwing it in way quicker than we should. Everything stays really flat. Woo! Ooh. Guys, if you're looking for a performance luxury vehicle, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 Kia Stinger GT2. And a big thanks to David and Carlos at Century Kia in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for David or Carlos. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.